Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome again to our online worship service. I'm so glad that you are here, that you are tuning in with us today. Welcome to the members of Eagle Rock Presbyterian Church, the members of Occidental Presbyterian Church, and all of those of you out there around the world. If you are tuning in for the very first time, welcome. We are glad you are here. Now is the time for us to come together, wherever we might be today, to come together and to worship God. I want to invite you now to join with me in our call to worship. Happy are we who are called into God's presence. For we walk in the light of God. Let's worship God together. Celebrating who God is and all that God has done. For God is our strength and our protection. The one in whom we trust. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out. 
it never runs out on me
God's grace and God's mercy are abundant. We have hope and a knowledge that God forgives our sins. And because of this, we can go to God and confess our sins, to let it all out before God, to admit that we fall short. So I want to invite you now, knowing that God's grace is complete, let's go to God with a word of prayer. Let's join together. Holy God, we do not deserve to be in your presence. We have not led a blameless life. We have done evil to both those we love and to those we refuse to love as we should. We have not been faithful stewards of that which we, with which we have been blessed and have hoarded that which should be shared. Hear our cry, God, our hope. Save us from our foolishness and guide us to your wisdom. Cleanse us from our brokenness that we might do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Let's continue in a moment of silent personal confession. Our God is just, our God is merciful, and our God forgives our sins. Know today that your sins are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Let's all join together in our prayer for illumination. Let's pray. Mighty God, you spoke to your people in the pillar of cloud as they walked together in the wilderness. Speak to us through your word today that we may hear you calling us out of the wilderness places in our lives and into new places you have promised to show us. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading for today comes from the 88th Psalm. I'm going to be reading to you from the Message Translation. The psalmist here is laying it all out. He is opening up the floodgates here. Listen for where the psalmist is here today. The writer says, God, you're my last chance of the day. I spend the night on my knees before you. Put me on your salvation agenda. Take notes on the trouble I'm in. I've had my fill of trouble. I'm camped out on the edge of hell. I'm written off as a lost cause. One more statistic, a hopeless case. Abandoned as already dead. One more body in a stack of corpses. And not so much as a gravestone. I'm a black hole in oblivion. You've dropped me into a bottomless pit, sunk me in a pitch black abyss. I'm battered senseless by your rage, relentlessly pounded by your waves of anger. You turned my friends against me, made me horrible to them. I'm caught in a maze and can't find my way out, blinded by tears of pain and frustration. I call to you, God. All day I call. I wring my hands. I plead for help. Are the dead a live audience for your miracles? Do ghosts ever join the choirs that praise you? Does your love make any difference in a graveyard? Is your faithful presence noticed in the corridors of hell? Are your marvelous wonders ever seen in the dark? Your righteous ways noticed in the land of no memory? I'm standing my ground, God, shouting for help. At my prayers every morning on my knees each daybreak. Why, God, do you turn a deaf ear to me? Why do you make yourself scarce? For as long as I remember, I've been hurting. I've taken the worst you can hand out, and I've had it. 
Your wildfire anger has blazed through my life. I'm bleeding, black and blue. You've attacked me fiercely from every side, raining down blows till I'm nearly dead. You make lover and neighbor alike dump me. The only friend I have left is darkness. This is, in fact, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, you know, this has been a tough time for everyone. Maybe some of those feelings mentioned there by the psalmist are feelings that you have had too. This has been a particularly tough time, I have to say, for parents. Amen, fellow parents. Kids home all day and also You're their teacher now? When was the last time that you uh, added fractions? No playgrounds, no movie theaters, no babysitters. I have a four-year-old at home. She is wonderful. I love her so much. But yeah, it's uh, it's been tough. My four-year-old, she had tantrums and breakdowns on occasions before this, but The frequency of these breakdowns has gone up. And probably I would say as mom and dad's stress levels have gone up mixed with the changes and limitations that have come in this time, that these have been felt by her. Now I'll tell you, my gut instinct during a tantrum, during one of my child's tantrums, is to be an authority figure, to sternly say, no, we don't act like this. You are not seeing things clearly and logically. Think this through. My plan is to reason and argue with her, argue her out of her tantrum. Well, what I've quickly learned is that this is about as effective as standing on the beach and trying to stop all of the waves from coming in. This method has been ineffective, and if I'm being honest, it only makes things worse. What I did find eventually, my wife has helped out with this too, of course, what we have found is to just just be there when the tantrum happens. Quietly, calmly sit with her or stand with her and really just kind of write it out without any judgment. And what she does, what I've found when this happens now, when we do this, when we're just there with her, going through it, what she does is she eventually says, I just want some alone time, and she goes into her room. And then about five, ten minutes later, she comes out with a big smile on her face and says, I'm better now. It's like, She's, she's made new in that short time of just crying it out. And it's amazing. It's like one kid goes into her room and another one, a totally different one, comes out. It's like when, when Steve Urkel goes into that machine and comes out Stefan Urkel. Oh, Rami gets the joke. I was afraid he wouldn't. She just gets it out. She gets it out of her system and then she's better. The psalm we just read is one of the angriest texts, I would say, in the Bible. Hard to hear, surprising even. A good way to think of the psalms is not to think of them as making doctrinal statements about God, but to read them rather as testimony of those faithful people who have come before. They are a record of the feelings of the people of God, and in that we see God at work. But even then, this one is rough. I love verse 15 here where the psalmist says, For as long as I remember, I've been hurting. I've taken the worst you can hand out and I've had it. You ever feel that way? I've had it. The psalmist is saying, this is too much. I am not okay. What's interesting about this psalm too is it doesn't get wrapped up like some do. In some psalms you see a problem and then an eventual resolution at the end of the psalm, but not in this one. I would say the psalmist shows us here that it is okay not to be okay. It's okay to reach out to God and just say, I can't anymore. So not being okay and admitting to not being okay does not mean that you lack faith 
or that you're weak or that you're not strong in the Lord. It doesn't mean any of those things. All it means is that you're saying that you're not okay. And I want to say today, let that out. Let those feelings out. It is okay not to be okay. But we do have to say, it's not okay to turn your stress and hurt into attacks on others. It's not okay to let your anger and anxiety and stress make you turn and hurt other people. That's not okay. And that's what we end up doing when we don't confess our hurts and pains and fears. That's what happens when we put up a dam and try to hold back all of those feelings. I'm saying today, let the dam break. Cry, mourn, sob, shout out, enough! Enough! I think that will bring some measure of peace. I can also say it won't change the state of things, won't change the state of the world, but it will change your state. But you might say, well, you know, I I can't cry out. That would just be selfish. My my stresses and losses, they they aren't all that big. Others have it so much worse. Well, you know, that very well might be true. But we've all lost something in this crisis. And we're not in a competition for who has lost the most. A loss is a loss. I've been so upset because the beloved coffee shop across the street from my house has closed. And I don't know if it's going to open up again. And that has been a sort of sanctuary for me at times. The Olympics have been postponed. I love the Olympics, and I'm so upset that we're not going to have the Olympics this summer. Yeah, that's nothing compared to losing a job or to losing a loved one. But all losses hurt. And whatever yours might be, your hurt is real. So let the dam break. Let it out. Don't let your hurt turn into hurting others. Rather, just let it out. God hears you. Cry out to God. And no matter how loudly you shout, no matter how upset you are, God can take it. That's part of God's grace that you can scream out to God and say, Yeah, I hear you and I know you're hurt, God says. I hear you and I know that you are hurt. So let the dam break, because today it's okay not to be okay. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to invite you now into a time of prayer. We want to continue to share prayer requests with one another. So feel free to email me or someone else in the church. Uh, Feel free to bring up uh, prayer requests during our Zoom fellowship time. If you're comfortable with it, you can even put them over in the chat window here in this video. We want to hear your prayer requests and be praying for one another. So I want to invite you now with those prayer requests on your heart. Let's turn to God. Let us pray. Hear our prayers, O God, and grant us the strength to be your voice in this world. So today we pray for this world with so much pain and no quick solution, and a fear and panic that no solution can be found. We pray for those who find prejudice a way of life, for those who are trapped and caught up, for those who have been displaced from home and loved ones. And for those living with and making difficult decisions, we ask today that you hear our prayers, Lord God. We lift up those who physically or emotionally build walls to separate themselves from others. For those who are only self-interested, we pray. And for those who live a life that dehumanizes others, we lift all of these up in prayers, Lord. We ask, please hear us as we pray. We pray for ourselves, for those who are our family and friends close by and far away, for those who we know who are ill and those recovering, those who are lonely, anxious, confused, and stressed, 
we pray. Hear us as we pray, Lord God. Again, we pray for us, and you know our hearts, Lord God. And so, in confidence, we come to you to pray the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I know that many of you are thankful for something even in this very difficult time, so I want to turn to you now and hear what you were thankful for. Today I'm thankful for my good health. I'm thankful for having enough PPE in our hospital so we can protect our patients, protect our staff, and all those affected by COVID-19. Today, I'm thankful for music and all the joy, peace, and escape it brings me. I'm thankful for my family and friends and God. We're grateful for our family. For Eagle Rock Presbyterian Church. What are you grateful for? Rock and roll. And rock and roll. Well, I uh, thank God for uh, keeping me safe and healthy and uh, keeping my family safe and healthy as well. And uh, thank God for uh, sustaining me every day. Thank you once again. Amen. Bye-bye. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to invite you now into a time of offering, a time where we return to God a little bit of what we have to support God's work and mission in the world. Again, the church might be closed, but its mission continues. So I invite you today to give to support God's work. You'll see on the screen right there links to how you can send in your offering today. And we thank you in advance for all the ways that you are supporting the work of God in the world. Let's come together to pray and dedicate these offerings. Lord God, we dedicate these offerings to your good purposes. We pray that they will be used to make you known. We pray that they will be used to bring about a just world, that your justice can reign here in this world. We thank you, Lord, and we remember that everything we have comes from you. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen.
to give a big thanks to everyone who has made this possible, to Kendro, Lily Beth, and to Rami. Again, make sure to like and subscribe. Pass this along to a friend. We will see you here again next week. Wherever you are, God is there too. And if you need to this week, let the dam break. Let it out. Shout to God. God can take it. And so, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be at peace. Amen.